My name is Puti and my surname is Meso. So I'm going to be taking you throughout the semester regarding the content of FAC 1502. All right, on, on top there, it's my name, Puti. I'm your tutor. And the second one is I'm going to be with you for 30 hours for this semester. I'm going to be with you every Saturday from 11.30, unless if something came up, but you will know well in advance before anything, right? So obviously this is a class for FAC 1502. We've got five topics with different learning units. I think it's about 16 or 17 learning units. There's a lot of work to be done. We have topic A, topic B, topic C, topic D, topic E. Topic A and B are just your basic foundations. Three, sorry, C, D, and E, those are the major ones. I'm not saying that A and B is not, it's not okay. It's good. Build up your foundation because you, you will rely on it for every questions that you'll be doing ongoing forward. Right, can you all see my email there? It's paladimeso at gmail.com. For any queries that you have, please do contact me here. I'll share the notes with you. I'll reply to your questions because sometimes you might not have question in the current happening in the class. If you understand the principles in account, because we deal with principles, guys, whether you like it or not, if you understand the principles, there's no way you can fail accounting. I'm not sure on how to have the question paper is now because you guys are writing the multiple choice and good luck with that. Uh, I'm struggling with the multiple questions because you what? don't get marks for methods used um, as in a, a normal paper. And yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm arranged here. I'm going to be honest with you and I'm going to be honest with each and everyone who is actually in this class. Guys, multiple choice question is not an easy thing because they're looking for an exact answer. OK, so the written exam paper used to be quite reasonable simply because we would give you marks for the principles. If you get what I'm saying, so if on the multiple choice question they're looking for the depreciation and it's 20 rands and you're giving us 15 rands, it's going to be wrong. OK, I do understand with that, but say, for instance, uh, you do a bank recon and you miscalculate one a uh, five rand. Yes. Then uh, your method used, you, you're not getting points for that, so they can see what you did. That's, that's the unfortunate part about it because at this point in time, the university is not interested in the method used. They interested more in the final answer. Okay. okay. But perhaps that's one of the things that you must raise up with the university and say that I know it is their decision, but I think maybe you can try and say we're not comfortable with the multiple choice questions. How about if we can try to do the, uh, the written exam? Okay, so and you guys are writing out of how many questions? Is it 20 or 30 or 15? I think it's 20 questions, 30 marks. Here's one thing that I can promise you. What we're going to do in this class throughout the 30 hours that have been allocated to you, we're going to learn on how to derive the final answer if it's a calculations required question. So we'll deal with that. I'll give you the process, I'll give you the principles, I'll give you the steps that you can use so that you can arrive at your answer. And then if you've got theoretical questions in your in your in in, in your questions, it means that you just have to know it at a go. You understand? Maybe because you've got access to books, you can just page up and check if the things like your accounting cycle, you don't have to calculate that. You just need to know the steps. Where does it start? Where is the middle part? Where is the end part? You know what I mean? That's the unfortunate part with regards to this pandemic. It brought up a lot of um, uncomfortable things with some of us here. Okay, before we, okay, today we're going to try and cover, our class is going to end at, uh, I think it's one thirty. it's two hour class session. Today, I'm just going to, before, all right, we'll do topic A, the entire of topic A, because that's theory. It doesn't have a lot of calculations. It's more on theory. We'll cover the entire topic A, all right? And then if you need the notes, okay, I'm glad to send you the notes. And if you've got any questions, you can raise them. And everything. But I just want to explain this further because not many of you realize on how easy accounting could get. Okay. First thing first. Um, and the content of FAC 1542. Okay, I've written a summary of uh, my understanding with regards to the FAC 1542. 
Okay, this is prior before the actual content with regards to topic A. If we can look at the top part there, say that you are going to deal with this financial statements for the FAC 1552, and it's only for the sole trader or the PBO only, okay? So the PBO is topic E, basically, all right, where you deal with your membership fees and the donations and all of those, all right? But we will do that when we close the briefs. But for now, I just want everybody to picture what the sole trader is. You guys are lucky because you don't do the financial statements for the partnership. You don't deal with the companies and you don't deal with the CC, all right? So you are solely going to focus on the financial statements for a one man show, which means it's a sole trader, okay? You contribute alone, you run your business alone, you benefit or disbenefit well. Thank you very much. Okay, on top there, I've got what's called the basic account equation. And I need everybody to hear me clearly. Underneath I wrote asset equal to equity plus liability. It's abbreviated A equal to E plus L. Please listen carefully. You need to know this. You need to understand this. I'm going to tell you why. If you fail to understand this, because this is actually the very beginning of your learning units. If you fail to understand this, you are going to struggle when you do your topic C up until your topic D. I'm not sure if I'm making sense. Even if you do postgrad in accountancy, your honors, your masters and whatnot, if you don't know this, it means that you need to go back. This is one step that you have jumped. Most of you have learned this in high school, but if you don't understand it, this is your turn or your time to actually can understand it. Right, basic accounting, basically you're going to deal with it on your topic C, your topic D, your topic uh, E. All right, I'm gonna break it down for you. Your asset equal to equity plus liability is what's called the account equation. And these entails your assets, your equity, along with your liabilities. This that I've underlined on its own, it determines your entire statement of financial position. Be a partnership, be a company, be a CC, be whatever. You need this. So let's see what our, our asset means. Our asset it comprises of our two components, which is your, I put it NCA and a CA. NCA stands for non-current assets, and my CA stands for the current assets. All right. It is your responsibility to know what are your non-current assets. I'm just going to give you an example. Land and building falls under the, uh, the non-current assets because those are the types of assets that are that are useful in more than 12 months period. Okay, so that includes your land and building, your vehicle. All right, as I was trying to explain in here that <coughs> In order for you to progress or to succeed in FAC 1542, you need to understand the basic accounting equation. Okay? It's a major important component that you need to understand. I'll tell you why. Because each and every learning unit that we're going to touch base on, it will require your basic understanding of the basic accounting equation, whether you like it or not. Okay? And if you're not comfortable about your understanding of learning unit one, please do go back, revise your work. Okay, I can assure you guys, you've got a lot of time. My advice to you is spare 30 minutes every day for your accounting. It is no coincidence that it requires a lot of your time. It's quite demanding. Okay, you need to date this. You need to make this your partner. Okay. At least if you, pay, if you spend about 30 minutes to 45 minutes every day, you won't struggle, okay? And it won't be wrong for you to actually do the work repeatedly because it will help you to understand it more and more and more and more. Right, basic account equation is actually classified in this sense or in this way. If you can look at my second underline, I've got my A equal to E plus L. Right, so my A stand for my assets and my E stand for my equity and my L stand for my liability. One more thing that you need to know, 
the entire sets, uh, the entire sets, uh, the entire sets of financial statements, the components of the financial statements, they are all here. And I'll explain why I'm saying that they are all here. We've got your assets. Assets uh, represent the four under your statement of financial position. You've got your equity. The equity represents the four under your statement of financial position. You've got your liability. They represent the four under your statement of financial position. Like I said, it is your responsibility for you to study those items that they do for under your assets, your equity, along with your liabilities. Okay, so the statement of financial position as one of the component of the financial statement, you can see it's all covered here. You've got your assets, you've got your equity, you've got your liabilities. That's fair enough and that's fine. Let's look at how the statement of provident laws and other comprehensive income feature in this underlying um, components. By standard, we know that uh, incomes, they increase your equity, all right? If the business is generating more income, it means that obviously the shareholder was then more of getting more dividends, okay? That's how you raise your equity. The incomes that you have under your statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive things, if you convert them under your equity, they would form or they would increase your equity, all right? The other set, the other half set of your statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive, which is your expenses and finance costs, they decrease your equity. Meaning that if a firm is spending more on their expenses, they are likely to get less dividends because their expenses are greater than your equity. How so? If you look at the framework of your statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income, the framework would consist of your revenue, your cost of sales, your other incomes, your expenses, as well as the finance cost. At the end of the day, the intention is to derive at a net profit or at a loss after paying your tax. Right. So that net loss or net profit is going to be converted to your equity. Right. And that's when you are going to do what's called the statement of changes in equity. Whatever the profit, they might give it to you in the exam or in any other form of a question. You need to convert that, whether it's a profit, whether it's a loss. If it's a profit, it means that it's going to be out of the brackets, meaning it's not deductible. And then if it's a net loss, it means that it's going to be within the brackets. It's going to be deductible. Right. Let me take you a little bit back, uh, back forward. Your assets, the assets of the sole trader, it will have two categories or two components. As I was saying that your asset comprises of two um, components or categories, which is your non-current asset and your current asset. You can see that I've written there as NCA plus a CA. So I usually call the non-current asset uh, that they've got lifespan of more than 12 months. In my current asset, usually they've got a lifespan of your um, of less than 12 months. In. So as I was saying that it is your responsibility to know what falls under your non-current assets. But with the little examples here, we know that your property, plant, and equipment is part of your non-current assets, which comprises of your land and building, and you, it comprises of your your machinery, your vehicle, and, and so forth. And then your current asset would have your cash and cash equivalents, which is bank, or you trade another receivables, which is your debtors, and you can have your inventory, or you can have your petty cash, and and so forth. Those are the items that are going to be listed under your current assets. Right. Since one of you guys on your first year FSC 1542, to those of you who will be continuing with accounting, like second year, third year, post-grad level, you would realize at a later stage that the land and building does depreciate. But in here, the land and building at this stage does not depreciate. Okay. Obviously, we'll see that one later. I think it's part of your topic C. 
Right. Um, did everybody understood when I talk about the account equation on the asset equals equity plus liability? Uh, I hope everybody else is actually clear on that one. I'm just going to bring back my equity explanation. Right. Since well, you guys are going to deal with the financial statements for a sole trader, your statement of changes in equity, even if you are dealing with the multiple choice question. This is the format that you guys must know. Your equity comprised of the capital contributions by the owner. The capital could be in a form of a cash. It could be in a form of an asset, sometimes in a form of a knowledge. All right. Despite the cash contributions, if it's an asset, we need to look at the value to be attached on that asset. I'll give you a little example there. For example, let's say you and I are starting a business and let's say we want to sell potatoes. And then you say, I've got the car. And then I say, OK, I'll bring my, my, my cash so that we can buy stock. OK, my cash, obviously, it's, it's an obvious thing we would know. OK, Pooji contributed 150,000 rand for the start of the business. But how much will be attached to my value of the truck? The truck, let's say the market value of the car is about 150 as well. So it means that we go, you go equally on, on, on that one. But unfortunately, this is not a partnership, but I'm just giving you an example that you can start your business with an asset or you can start your business with, without an asset. Okay, so it will be your capital contributions. If the owner is coming up with an asset, they will give you how much is the market value of that asset or the value attached to that asset as your capital contribution. The second part, you're going to deal with what's called drawings all right every little transaction with regards to the drawings they would tell you the key word there would be it was withdrawn or personal use if you see any transaction stating that it has been withdrawn for personal use it may be inventory in the business cash in the tills whatever in the form of withdrawal in the business it falls under your inventory as long as the transaction line says that it is for personal use. But unless they're clear with you and you're still straight away that this is a drawing. Okay. It's always a deduction. Tell you why, because it reduces your equity. It's no longer for the objective of the business, but it is for the objective of your own personal use. That's line number two under your equity. Remember that is your statement of changes in equity. The third part would be the profit or the loss. If the business is running at a loss, obviously it will be deductible, right? And if the business is running at a profit, it will be added towards your equity. And then what are you determining? The balance at the end of the period. Let's go back to the issue of the principle or the standards. The standard says that the equity increases on the credit side and decreases on the credit side. Sometimes they would give you what's called the T format and they put the capital on top. You understand? The T format, it's the line on top and the middle line, all right? So the, the red side is always the credit side. The left side will be the debit side, okay? Meaning that any capital contribution, which is the opening balance, it will cut. And then the deductions would come to the debit side. Okay, if you've got a drawings, immediately put it on the debit side, meaning that it's going to be deductible. If you've got a net loss, put it on the debit side. But if you've got a profit, move it to your credit side, all right? And then you're going to deduct whatever that has to be deducted from the capital. The balance that you are left with, it's your closing balance for that 12 months period. However, because you're going to run what's called a continuous business, unless if your business is coming to an end there. The closing balance will be the opening balance for the next financial period, meaning that it's going to be opening balance for the next accounting cycle. It's usually 12 months. All right, but here that you need to understand about accounting. There's always this thing that you can approach in things, depending on when you start the business and when is the end of your financial period. If you start in the middle of your 12 months period, obviously, SARS can't say, I'm gonna tax you for the whole 12 months. They will tax you for this duration of your, your business, from the starting point up until the end, end, ending point. What I'm trying to say is, you can start your business three months before the year end. 
Um, I've got a question for you, and I need somebody actually is based on asset. As I've told you that the principle, the standard says that the asset increases on the debit side and decreases on the debit side. What happened to you when the sole trader disposes for selling asset? Quickly, anybody with an answer quickly? It increases and decreases on the debit side. So bank would de increase and the, whatever asset is being sold would decrease. The both on debit. Will, uh, they're both on the asset side. But one debits, one credits. One debit, one credit. But which one is on the credit and which one is on the debit? Depending on what you're selling. If you're selling a building, then the plant and equipment would decrease. So that's the credit. But then the bank would increase. So that would be on the debit. OK, thank you so much for that. Uh, but the other thing that I haven't emphasized there is how are you selling your asset? That's one thing that you need to take into consideration. If you're selling your asset for cash, obviously that would hike your bank. But if you're selling an asset for credit, the bank is not going to be affected at all. Who are we inviting? Debtors, right? Here's the thing. When, when you're selling an asset for cash, you're receiving the money immediately. That will be That's why your bank account is actually increasing. But if you're selling your, uh, your asset with a credit, it means that you are raising a debtor because the person hasn't gave you the money. I don't know if that makes sense. It does make sense because it, sense. It, um, it will increase the debtor's control account yes. and decrease the asset you're selling. So if it's trading inventory, then you're going to credit the trading inventory um, it will, because it's reducing. And the debtor's control account would increase due to the fact that you're incurring a new customer that owes you. That's quite clear. So you just need to be careful whether on how the asset has been sold. OK, same applies to how the asset has been purchased. The, the effect with regards to the recordings, it will always be different. If it's sold on cash, your bank account obviously it will size up. But if you are selling it on credit, then you are inviting a debtor to your business. OK, so same applies to if you are purchasing an asset on cash, it means that the size of your bank account, it goes down because the money is moving out of the business, right? It's immediate cash. And then if you're buying it on a credit, it means that you're raising what's called the creditors, not the debtors this time around, the creditors, liability. I'm going to move on to liabilities. Sorry if I'm closing you down, but I, I'm giving you the freedom to speak if you don't understand anything. But questions will Will, will avail themselves and then we'll, we'll take it from there with, with regards to the questions. Liabilities, we've got, can, all right, can you all see on how your income statement features in your asset equal to equity plus liabilities? Is everybody key on that one? I've involved what's called the statement of changes in equity and I've involved what's called the statement of profit and loss. And already automatically we're dealing with what's called the statement of financial position. Three components of the financial statements are already there. Liabilities, liabilities, we've got the non-current liabilities and then we've got the current liabilities. So usually the liabilities that are non-current, they should be payable within or in greater than 12 months period. And the current liabilities are payable in less than 12 months period. Right, you ask yourself, what constitute my, con or what items falls under my non-current liabilities? Uh, your long-term loan your debentures, right, and your mortgages, they fall under your non-current liabilities, right? And then what falls under my current liabilities? Your creditors, right? Because creditors, uh, creditors are usually payable on a timely basis. You can agree with them that I'll pay you in three months time or on a monthly basis and stuff. You know that. I mean, you've got your Truett's account, you've got your Woolworth's account, you've got your Macam's account, Usually they want you to pay on a monthly basis. That's why when you go to the store, if you buy goods on credit, they will tell you that six months or 12 months period. I think most of you have that because the interest measured on that kind of a purchase is not the same. All right, this is what I've explained here, capital. I make sure that I made the keyword under your drawing. The keyword is personal use, right? Now mention the capital, which is a contribution. And you've got a profit, you've got a loss, it's within the brackets. 
My apologies, I forgot to put the drawings under the brackets. That's obvious and it's always the case. Right, liabilities, I gave you an explanation with regards to that one. Let's have a look at this one. One of the major important part of your financial accounting, double interest system. Can any one of you tell me what does it mean? What do we mean when you talk of the double entry system? Double entry system means what we do on the left, we also do on the right. So for each and every transaction, when you have a debit, there should be a credit to go along with it. There should be a credit to go along with that. Basically what it means is for every transaction record, there must be an above to substantiate that. Meaning that in accounting, when you deal with a transaction, if you find yourself recording one transaction, you need to ask yourself, why am I doing that? You understand? So that's quite a disability when it comes to accounting. One leg won't move in accounting. You need another leg so that you will be moving in a good pace with regards to the standard. So it should be the recording of two or more transactions when it comes to a double entry system. So for every time when you are given a transaction and then you perform the solution, you need to make sure that where is my other leg or where is my extended leg? Then you'll never go wrong with the country. As I said that now we're getting, we get, we're developing ourselves in a content. That's why I said that we're going to cover our topic A just like that. But you'd see guys, as we progress with the content, things are going to get a little bit slower because there's going to be a lot of practical courses that we are doing. I just want to make sure that I don't leave you guys behind. But with a theory, you can always go back and revise the way, right? Theory in accounting, most of the students, they don't, they don't take the theory in accounting seriously. You need to take it seriously and I'll tell you why, because the theory that you read is what you are going to apply it at practice. I need to emphasize more. Students who are going to major with accounting, theory at this point in time, it's very crucial for you. Unlike students who just want to pass and go. Theory is very important for future students who want to study accounting. I'll tell you why. When you do a post in accounting, there's no time for you to time for the lectures to ask you to calculate the depreciation. They know that you know that it is a time it's about time for you to apply the standards. These basic principles and the concepts, you are going to write them down as per their standards. You will find a little question that is quite a bit long. That's they say calculate the depreciation or adjust your bad debt recovered and stuff like that. Instead of them asking you that kind of a question, they will just actually give you a scenario and explain what the bad debt requires. Why this kind of a bad required? How can we recover the money? That's what they want when you do your post grade. They know that you know the things. They don't have time to ask you anything concerning the financial statements. It's gonna contain a little part of, um, what is it, your examining, uh, your exam, your exam paper, basically. So please make sure you read your theory quite carefully. Again, the second reason will be you audit financial statements in accounting. When you do auditing, you're not going to write the financial statements. They are going to give you the bank report and they'll say 40 marks, and they'll say audit the bank report. The bank report. You are going to write. You're not going to calculate. So it will help you to. Speaking of experience, because I know when I did my CTA, I struggled a lot because I didn't know what was happening at post grade level, but I struggled, which resulted to me to fail time and again. So I don't want you to be like me. I want you to prepare yourself so that when you do your CTA or the honors in accounting or tax, you know exactly what is happening. All right, but thank you so much for that. Let's have a look at your learning unit one, which is inclusive of you basic concept and principles and objectives of the accounting. So the basic concept and the principles and the objectives of the accounting, um, of the accounting, we're looking at for you, for you to write your financial statements, you need to know that concept. Not every concept goes to your income statement. I mean, you can't take your cost of an asset towards your income statement. That's completely wrong, which is why it's important for you to understand the framework, okay? Principles, we are guided. In accounting, let me tell you a secret. This secret will take you far. In accounting, we don't need an intelligent student. <laughs> we don't need your excessive brain power. What we need is 
we need you to be guided by the guidelines and then we need you to follow the guidelines and the principles. Okay, so it's period that if you are clever in accounting, the chances are you're going to be a thought star. We don't need that. Right, so a smart student would always know, okay, my IAS2, which regulates inventory, I deal with inventory now. It means that I have to deal with my international accounting standards that regulates inventory. You can't pick up your FS16 or FS9 and put it under inventory. That's completely wrong. That's what I'm saying that it requires your understanding of the concept and the principle and the standards. Right? Moving further, refill there. Let's have a look at um, what is accounting. Everybody at this stage knows what the definition of accounting is. You record, you transact, you follow the principles, and all of those. The nice part about, about the accounting, even at corporate world, you use words and figures as an accountant, which are used as your concept, principles, and the procedure in terms of the accountings. Right. The universal accounting denominator is the common use the measurement in terms of accounting. We use money. That's the reality about it. We talk money in accounting, nothing else. Okay. But here's the thing. If you are in South Africa, you can do your financial statements with the US dollar or with pounds. You need to be in compliance with our rents or our currency. Okay. So to those of you who will be doing what's called the group accountant, you would find that I've got, for example, let me give you an example with regards to KFC. Or let me give you an example with regards to, you know, APSA was merged with, with Butlet, right? Butlet was actually the parent or the holding company for APSA. What they did is the APSA across the, the, the globe, they were doing their financial statements with their currency. And the upside in South Africa, they would do their financial statement with the rents. Okay, so what happens is at the board meeting when they meet, that country would present their own financial statements. I would present my own financial statements in South Africa. The problem is, that's where we need the correlation. I'm with the rents, they are with the dollar. What do we do? You are in South Africa, we convert. Conversion will take place, you understand? Your dollar will be converted into rents. Or if you are there in the USA, your rents will be converted into the, the dollar because we need to avoid this thing of miscalculations or the discrepancies, which is quite wrong. But looking at the important limitations of utilizing money, all events expressed in money territories, but the majority of the transactions that we use, they are actually in money. This is good for post red level because that's where you write your standards. But the value of money as a stable and is influenced by many economic factors such as inflation. It heats the economy at all the time, all right? So the rent depreciates and it appreciates. We hear that all the time on the news. Forms of ownership. And uh, those who did business studies, they know this thing. We've got four main types. Our major focus is going to be on the sole trader, as I've said. Partnership, not at this point in time, but you will see that probably on your maybe second year or accounting 1601, somewhere there. Your CC, you will see that in your accounting 1601 or something. Companies, it's gonna be an extension of your sole trade. Financial statements will always be the same, but new concept will be, will be added when you do your companies. Right, apart from this four, we've got what's called the MPO to be distinguished before under your topic E. Right. So the main difference there would be the use of a new technology. You don't pay tax, you do this and this and this and stuff like that. Let's look at the users of their financial statements. You need to be very careful on this one. They like it under your multiple choice question. In the assignment, I've seen it so many times, I've never seen your exam paper. That's why you have to be careful, right? You need to know who are the users of the financial statements. Why do they need the financial statements? Investors. We are the providers of the capital. We are more concerned with the risk in association with how much they put in the business. Obviously, you can't put money in the business where you don't even expect, unless if you're running an NPO or an EJ, or if you're a government where you are providing the infrastructures. Okay, so no investor would put their money in the business without any potential return as part of their expectation. Employees, we're all concerned about, okay, my employer is actually going through a liquidation. Will I be able to get my salary? Do you get what I'm saying? Will I be able to get my increase, right? Like at this point in time, everybody's concerned about what if my company collapses because of this pandemic, 
right. The lenders or the financial institutions. For example, if you go to the bank now personally and then you're looking for a loan, do you think the bank will give you the money without guaranteeing that you will repay them back? It's an absolute no. They know very well that some of the people, they want to take their accounts, they want to run away, but they do qualify. They have to take that kind of risk. But I can assure you, their risk is in association with more than 50% with regards to their expectations of repayment. Suppliers and other traders, uh, trade creators, when you go to any other retail stops in the country, let me give you an example with PKP. Most of the items that they are on their shelf, they don't own them, but they've built up a relationship with their trade creators. They give them stock, they agree on how they're going to repay them back. Okay. Obviously, there's a sort of there's some sort of um, the guarantee. Okay. So usually there's an interest in association with how much or whatever the stock that they give you there because they need to gain on that. Customers. Customers are more concerned with regards to their reputation, the reputation of their organizations. I mean, not everybody, yeah, unless if you're from South Africa, because South Africa we forgive quickly. But government agencies, these are usually the sponsors. The government agency, they just don't want to sponsor companies that are rotten in most cases. Public, be more concerned of the status with regards to their the economy. I'm not sure if you look, if you're listening to, uh, what is it? Uh, the business shows on your know, Power FM or 702, they usually talk about this. Right, let's have a look at uh, 1.6. I hope there's no questions. So if you've got a questions, you are free to go ahead and ask me. Let's look at the fields of accountancy. We are divided into two. We've got financial accounting, and then we've got what's called the management accounting. Number two, this is where if you're doing management accounting, your brain must be. This is where we need your intelligence. Because I call these people what's called the pillar of the firm. For whatever the new product development in the firm, they have to be part of it. Should the ship sink, we're going to look at them. So financial accountants, you guys, your work is to prepare the financial statements or to do the company books in compliance with your FS or your international financial statement. Accounting principles, your conceptual framework and theoretical ideas with regards to your accounting policies. That is the guideline to manage their transactions. Let me tell you something about this one. For example, we've got oh, one thing that I like about the accounting that we do in theory, they apply it corporate. Okay. For example, if you buy an asset where you follow the depreciation under the cost model, should you change and say, I'm going to follow my reducing bonus method? You need to update that because you're going to be in fight with the auditors. They are going to know as to why didn't you update the change in regards to your accounting policy? Okay, or the valuation method with regards to inventory. If you're moving from the FIFO to the weighted public method, there should be an adjustment with regards to your update as to why are you doing it. Okay, disclosure with regards to your financial uh, accounting policy. Financial statements should be disclosed in compliance with the accounting policy. Your financial statement should be transparent and fair enough so that you are not going to be in a problem. International financial reporting standard, that's your efforts and your international accounting standard. It's no in denial that we are in compliance with the standards. Everything that you do in accounting, you have to be in compliance with your efforts or the accounting standards. Accounting statements and standards. In most cases, okay, at this point in time, we don't write, we are complying with FS9, financial instruments when you do the financial statements at your level. But at a higher level, you'll be required to do that. When you motivate, you need to tell us, okay, if this nine uh, dot dot two, what, 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 right? So that's fall under your accounting standards and statements. So the objectives of the accounting statements is to limit the variety of the available accounting practices. Okay. And it's important at the same time because imagine if each and everybody can just do the financial statement in their own way, following their own procedures following their own standard. You understand? So you can imagine the amount of confusion will be brought up into the picture. All right. Conceptual frame for the financial reporting standard. Like I said, when you do the income statement, you need to understand the framework. You don't just write. 
when you do your statement of changes in equity, you need to understand the framework. I gave you that. You can't blame me for not giving you that. When you do your statement of financial position, you need to understand the framework. I also gave you that. You need to understand how you are going to frame it when you do that. Right, the objectives of the financial statement to provide the users with the financial information about the financial position, so the performance, financial performance amount to net profit or loss, income statement, financial position. We need to know at the end of the financial position is at the end of the financial period, where are our standing? We have enough equity. How is the liability standing? Is there progress? You understand? Changes in the financial position to enable them to make an economic decisions on the past events. Obviously, if this year, for example, we had a profit of about two million, we can't just sit there and say we are happy about it, then we don't move forward. Of course, we are happy, but we have to aim for higher. We probably need like maybe the target will be four million or five million or whatever. Okay. Underlying assumptions, going concern, moving forward of the business. It assumes that an entity will continue to drain your business for brighter future. Okay. So going concern is more concerned about moving forward, going. So you allow your cost and revenue to be allocated for the future accounting bureaus. That's your income versus your expenses, but provide a more realistic value for the entity's assets. Okay. Allow your fixed asset to be written off proportionally over their useful life. This is the depreciation part. When you've got assets that are depreciable, you need to lay whatever the percentage there and comply with it. Characteristics of the financial statements. Be careful on your multiple choice questions. Somebody was complaining about the multiple choice questions. Be very careful. Okay. So your financial statement should be relevant and they should be presented in a faithful manner. Right? The further enhancement of that comparability, that's what you have to do. Compare it with the previous information with regards to your finance, uh, your financial statement. And they're verifiable. Yes, are they? yes, they are. Verifiable meaning that did you comply with what whatever the regulation it is. Yes. Timeliness, do they fall within the financial accounting period? Are they understandable? Yes. Any constraint measures relevant to and reliable information cause plays a major factor of constraints and on the quality of the financial information. Benefits should be positive, exceed the cost of providing it. Okay. For example, guys, no retail store can just I mean, you can't buy a pack of tin stuff with 50 rands and sell it for 50 rands. I mean, we've got tea, we've got people that are working at the tea, we've got securities that we have to pay, the people that are putting the product in the shelves, you understand, those people have to be, obviously the market has to be a bit, it has to be a bit higher of that so that you can earn profit. Okay, so the other day I was with this other friend of mine, he said that he wanted to sell the used oil. You see the oil that they use for burgers or bunny chows and stuff like that. He was worried about because he doesn't have this business idea. He was worried about okay, I'm gonna buy this with this, and I'm gonna sell it with and make a profit of about fifty cents. You understand? I was like, dude, you need to look at this in a bigger picture because the more you have the oil, the more the sales you're going to generate, and the more the profit you're going to. Be. But if you look at oil within five liter range, obviously that's nothing. That's not a business. So that's what, happen, that's what happens in our retail stores. You may find out that their team of the pill charts, it costed them about 21 rands. And then they sell it for 22 rands. But because there's a lot of pill charts, that's how they make profits. They made sure that the volumes are there for sale. And that's how they make. But the elements of the financial statements have explained that. I'm repeating my asset being a uh, Equals of an equity plus their liabilities is measured in the statement of financial uh, position. Um, look at our statement of financial, sorry, changes in equity there. You've got your capital, you've got additional capital contributions, you've got your profit. The loss, at least this time around, is in the bracket. In the bra uh, sorry, the drawings, I think, I still made the same mistake as without the bracket. But please, guys. Uh, don't say I didn't tell you that the drawings must be under the brackets. And don't say that I didn't tell you that. When you see the keyword, we're drawn for personal use. That's drawings. Right. Elements in the profit or loss, income and expenses, and then you determine the profit or the loss. It's the main objective part of the profit or loss and other comprehensive income. 
How do you recognize your elements in the financial statement? Probabilities of the future economic benefit. Right, so this is actually an association with the flow to and from the entity. Right, it's measured in terms of your assets and liabilities. Right. As you get the reliability, are they reliable? I think most of the things in here I have explained. So we've spoken about them to be used in the entire set of the financial statement components. Let's have a look at your learning unit two. This has been discussed prior, but we're just going to extend more into the knowledge. Uh, we're looking at the elements of the financial statements, the basis of accounting, right? So like I said, at this point in time, students are introduced to the elements of the financial statement, particularly on the statement of financial position. Right, that I derived in asset minus your abilities, financial positions and stuff like that. Okay. Um, all right, it's, it's, it's okay that I'm not responsible for, for, for all right, many, many students before when I was in Florida, they, they, they used to say, I think it's going to come in. What do you think is going to come in the, in, the, in the exam? I'm not, because I'm not responsible for exam. I don't even see your paper. And the worst part was, uh, during that time, when I used to visit her office, she would just pack everything on a table to say, oh, oh, no, no, you're the enemy. So you don't have to see whatever that is actually on the table. So I do not see that. But if I had the power to can examine your paper, I was going to ask you guys that, I was going to ask you a question around the net asset value. So who can tell me what the net asset value is? Who can tell me what the net asset value is? Isn't the net asset the assets minus the liabilities? It is the asset minus the liability. Basically, it's your equity. So that's the other form of a terminology, the other terminology with regards to your... Um, sometimes they can give you a question like calculate the net asset value. You must just know that it's your asset minus your liabilities. Does it make sense? So in principle, the other term for the equity is the net asset value. All right, we've dealt with the definition of an asset, and then we've given it, we've dealt with the components of your asset under the statement of financial position. You can see that. So the same as your liability. So you can see that I've mentioned that my owner's equity is equal to your net asset value. Okay, so understanding of the double entry system, we did that before, just now. Uh, we are done with it. Okay. So, come to your statement of financial position. All you're looking at, I'm going to tell you now is, I know this gives, gives us a pressure and a bit of a problem. The depreciation, it's what it is when you do. It forces you to do what's called the property plan and equipment note. And then obviously you need to deal with the part of the depreciation. And then you have to move it your non-current asset as your PPE, right? So we fail that. But let me tell you something about what I like about the accounting nature. The principles that they use is, you'd calculate that kind of a story to use, so the rubbish of your depreciation and then you'll end up in having 300,000 rand. By the time students were writing the exam under the written part, they used to benefit a lot in the sense that you'd calculate the rubbish and move exactly the same amount of it. There's no need for me as a marker to penalize you because you moved exactly what you arrived at as a conclusion and you move it to the, to the right part. But this time around, things are difficult now because you need to get the exact amount of the depreciation. That's where the tricky part is. And it's way frustrating because it's too much frustrating because you guys, imagine you see this question of a depreciation. They don't want you to show the workings. They just want you to arrive at an answer and it says 12 months. That's how sad it is when it comes to this thing of the multiple choice. But unfortunately, I don't have the powers to can change that. You just have to you just have to work your way around that. But we'll try to do as many questions as we can just before we at least this time around, we don't have 15 hours, we've got 30 hours. We'll try to do as many questions as we can. So that even if you do them at your own corner, then you'll be able to try all your best. Learning unit three, it's all about the financial performance. This is the things that I've explained already. Financial performance is your income statement, right? So everybody else who is actually, even the investors, when they want to see the financial statement, they want to see, are you guys running at a profit or are you guys running at a loss? That's 
basically what they are interested in. Okay, the rest of the financials they would come, they will see them. That's okay. But what we need is, are you profit driven or are you loss driven? Why? What could be the can I rescue you? Can I not? Can I? What? What are the risks that I can put in place so that I can lift you? Those are the things. So basically, we're going to deal with the financial performance, which is your statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income. At the end of the day, there's no denial that we're looking at the results, performance, which is your net profit or the net loss. OK, um, this this time around, you guys are not dealing with the income tax. If you are writing the written exam, I was going to say it was going to be a benefit for you because you don't have to deal with 28% of the tax, right? But and the nice part about these things, you just put that as an additional info and we'll give you a mark for that. We used to give students marks for that just to write uh, income tax dash. Well, we used to give, that's how students used to used to pass. Okay, so your financial payments will comprise of your income and then you minus your expenses. Okay, so your income will be your revenues, your cost of sales, and your gross profit. At least there's a way you can deal with the cost of sales depending on what kind of a method you're dealing with by calculating that inventory part. Okay, but we'll deal with that as time goes by. And then you'll know how to adjust your sales with regards to this or as part of your revenue. There's quite an adjustment with regards to that. Right. So 3.2 says that an entity makes a profit when an income and are greater than expenses. And then when the laws are greater than your, uh, your income, the business will be. So when the expenses are greater than your income, the business will actually make a loss. Right. Income, uh, there's definition in here. And I hate, to be honest with you, I hate reading the definition of this accounting concept. Well, I say it's income that are used for the benefits of rather than have to know what represent what amounts to the income. Right? Um the income which includes of your sales deducts your sales returns. You guys know how to derive what you know, sales minus your sales returns. Um it will be your net sales. And then you've got an additional income that's your other incomes. So we're looking at the gains. All right, this is where we go to look at picture when we to topic, right? Because our other incomes are going to be more extended. They're going to get out of the tricky with regards to, sometimes they can bring you a question with regards to a disposal of an asset. And they would ask you, determine whether the asset has been sold at a profit or at a loss, you understand? So that's one of the things, one of the major things that you must know. Or they would give you a question to say, the profit or loss on the disposal of an asset and they'll give you a b c d and they'll give you that different amounts okay we'll get to that in terms of your asset disposals and you will understand it way much better right so more other incomes would entail your fees end and sale of the interest income your rental income dividends income commission and credit losses Recover. I was telling the tax students earlier on because I had tax before you that we see most of our citizens, they get income from different sources and they don't disclose that for such. And then when they are behind them, they get to be very frustrated because those guys that don't play games, they can give you 15 to 20 years without even bothering you at all. But when they are at your toes, you can't reverse them. Okay, so people have the tendency of getting multiple income but they've got the tendency at the same time of not disclosing so that they feel because they feel that their tax is too much. Right? So you'd rather be on the safe side than to be on the sorry side. Right? Let's look at the expenses. Expense, example expenses would include, I just um, quote a few, which is your insurance, your depreciation, as well as your bank charges. Okay. So, like I said, I always ask my students, like, when do you check your bank statement? Because we as South African people, we tend to pay a lot of bank charges unaware because your bank can survive on how much you have on your bank account. You don't think of saving on how much have you spent on your bank charges. I don't know if I'm making sense. So 
we are this nation where we say, oh, I earn 5,000 ring a month, or I earn 250 a month. Okay, as soon as my 250 comes into my, my bank account, I'm left with 200, and I'm going to survive with the 200 rand. You understand? But every transaction that you make, you're not even aware, or you're aware, but you just chose to be ignorant, to say, but my apps is charging me so much. How can I do to actually can manipulate that? Do you get what I mean? So that's the problem that we're encountering as the nation with regards to whatever that I'm spending on my bank charges. Is it enough? Am I willing to pay that? Do I even check? Do I even care? You understand? And the funny part is, if you get paid, for example, on the 15th, you know by the 10th you're broke. You understand? So that little kind of a savings there, it can actually survive you for that five days up until you get paid the next salary. All right, so I'm just advising you on that. I think it's just a personal advice. Make sure that you do check your, it's important actually. Right, your your losses. So there's a high chance that when you run a business, you might run into loss. So obviously that has to be disclosed. And you know that you move your loss from your statement of profit and loss and you move it to, your statement of uh, changes in equity as a deduction. Right, I mentioned before that your income or profit increase your equity and the loss decreases your equity. That's how you work your way up to your, that's how you work your way up to disclosing those kind of transactions to your statement of changes in equity. Right, um, equity equal to your capital plus net profit. And the other equity would be equal to your capital minus your net loss. Okay. Either way, at the end of the day, you're going to have the results at a loss or at a profit, right? Looking at the statements of uh, the profit and loss in OCI, okay? When we deal with that, we deal with that. I think that's because of, um, we, sorry, that's, we spoken about that. All right, um, sorry to bring this back to, to your losses. Um, I know that when we mug students by the time they were writing, for you to say put it limited, for example, up there, and then underneath you say statement of profit and loss other companies for the year end 31st of one would give you a full mark for writing that down. But those opportunities or those chances are gone. They're no longer there. Okay. So the nice part of the five, if you know your framework in accounting back then, for, me, for the mere fact that you wrote depreciation under your expenses, would we'll give you half mark for that. Who gets that anyway? So people used to benefit a lot with a lot of marks. I think we were, it was just the issue of we were growing up, we were just growing them up to prepare them for the, for the heavy rock or the big mountain. Statement of changes in equity, I think there's no need for me to actually explain that. Accounting policy and explanatory notes, okay? Um, here I'm just going to touch base on, you know, we are guided by your first in your international um, accounting standards. Explanatory notes, it's, uh, you remember when I told you that when you prepare the, or when you are appointed as the preparer of the financial statements, when you check or when you move from, uh, let's say, the cost method of calculating depreciation to the unit production method or to the reducing balance method, you need to explain that under your notes, all right? But then again, it's important for you guys to understand the framework for the property, plant, and equipment notes. Okay, if you've got that structure, at least that's minus one problem. The bigger picture would be, okay, I'm going to deal with the depreciation because that's the only problem there. The, that will be the thing that, okay, let me just focus on. But if you know that you're dealing with your cost, minus accumulated depreciation, then you get your carrying amount, then you go to your additions, you go to your depreciation, you go to your disposals, you go to this and this and this, and then you get your carrying amount at, at the end, you do your cost, and then you do your commit, then you're safer in that sense. Okay, let's do this. I think that brings us to the end of our learning unit three. Let me see who's got a question. All right, that brings us to our final learning unit, which is learning unit four, the recording of transaction. Alrighty, we're now on learning unit four where we are going to record transaction. It is no coincidence that they're going to give you transactions that need to be recorded, okay? For one, to understand the process or the easiest way of recording the transaction, you need to understand what the debit and credit means, okay? Which is gonna boil us back to what's called basic 
accounting preparation. Okay, here is my advice. I know some of you, you've got an accounting background, and that's okay. And some of you, you don't have an accounting background. To those of you who don't have an accounting background, my advice to you is, when you do accounting, establish all the list of your assets, all the list of your equity, all the list of your liabilities, and all the list of your incomes and expenses. And this is how you're going to pay them, right? At initial stage, you know that your assets and your expenses, they both increase on the debit side along with the decrease on the credit side. That's your assets and your expenses. Happy? Your incomes, your liabilities, and your equities, they increase on your credit side and they decrease on your debit side. I'm giving you this kind of an advice so that when you write or when you perform or practice your transaction, you will be able to know, oh, I'm dealing with an expense. Initially, this is to increase on my debit side. All right, getting those lists. I'm talking about people who don't have an accounting background, who are actually not knowing what is what they Getting those lists under order, that should be your basic practice. And guys, let me tell you something. If you know that in accounting, you will never. They can give you any questions at any time, whether you're getting awake or something. Your principles would always be right. That I can assure you. I wanted to find out the, the list that you said we must establish. You, you mentioned assets, equity, liabilities, and what else at the end? I, I couldn't get it there. Okay, I'm going, to go, I'm going to go on a slow pace there. I want you to actually write it down for me. Okay, first, first and foremost, you're going to write asset. You're going to write your your as your number one is going to be your asset and jump four lines. Number two is going to be expenses. Your number three is going to be equity. Your number four is going to be your incomes. And your number five is going to be liabilities. From your number three to your number five, those increase on the credit side and they decrease on the debit side. Yes, thank you very much. And then number one and number two, those they increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. Okay, one more thing, Catherine. When you get a home, uh, yes. you need to seek yourself a list of a list of your assets, a list of your expenses, and a list of your those kind of things. So the best way to do that, get yourself some frameworks in the study guide. It will give you a list of your assets and your equities and those kind of things. Effect of the transaction on the base basic account equation is what I just told Catherine that accounting has a starting point and it has the end point. The end point is that somebody please uh, your so the effect of uh, the effect of the transaction in regards to your basic account equation will do that. Okay, um, next week we'll pick one of the questions just to do the basic of the basic account equation as to if you've got a transaction where are we fitting it under that, that you know the table that has your asset equity and liabilities. We'll, we'll do that. Let me see what I haven't touched yet. Transactions which affect only asset equity and liabilities. That's your statement of financial position. Okay. So whoever need that, I'll send you notes. Or if you're comfortable, then it's fine. It means you are safe. Transactions with raise incomes and expenses. I put there in a summary. It's your incomes, your expenditures, your credit income your credit expenditure and the payment received. Okay, guys, there's one thing that you must know. I know that I mentioned the same of the purchase of an asset via the credit. Okay, when you sell your inventory, you need to listen carefully here. When you sell your inventory on credit, and then you're required to do the income statement. That's part of your revenue. Whether you have received the money, you need to include that on your revenue. Okay, so that, that that's going to be part of your, your revenue. The only implications will be, but you will see that when you do the practical questions. The only implications will be on that because Sorry when you sell, to disturb. please please go ahead. What did you say about inventory now? All right, let's say uh, Woodwards. Woodwards. They sell they sell clothing on credit, right? Hmm? Well, when they sell you clothes on credit automatically on the system, it will appear as revenue, whether you paid them or not. Okay, okay. because mm -hmm. it's an income that will be recognized to be received later, just part of your payment. Okay, 
but at the same time, they would move that to a data. Okay. So what, what I'm trying to say is under your income statement, you're going to have that revenue, whether you have received the money or not. But when you do your statement of financial position, they going to you're going to be part of the list of the data set. Okay, I understand. Thank you so much. Makes it depend, depending on the requirement. But under general accounting standards, that's how it works. Okay, okay uh, we've discussed the financial statements there. Uh, you know, the, as I said, the only tricky part is the depreciation. The large accounts, they're only performed in the form of a T format. Okay, meaning that you need to have the underlying line and then you need to go there. I don't know, I think it's vertical and horizontal. I'm not sure which one face where, but it has to be done in that way. And then if you know your debit and credit, then you know that where is your opening balance goes. Right, as such, we have equity, the same liabilities, incomes and expenses. So I did my expenses for the balance account. So usually they'll give you an opening balance on the trial balance and they'll give you additional information as per your transactions. And then you have to make your own adjustment. But I think we'll deal with that one on learning unit two. Any questions or can I go ahead? Recording of the uh, transactions in the ledger accounts, like I said, you will get this. If you record this, you're going to be given this in most cases, not all the time, but they will give you a list of the opening balance in here. Okay, meaning that the closing balance from the previous accounting cycle are going to be the opening balance in the current accounting cycle. That's where you're going to put it on the debit or credit, depending on which one is which. Right, let's have a look at. All right, one more thing that I have to explain here with regards to your depreciation. Right, we know that is a decrease in the cost value of an asset, right? Meaning every year you, your value of an asset, the cost value of the asset will just go down. You need to always remember this. Your contra allocation account is for the double entry system for the depreciation. I think I wrote depreciation in terms of depreciation. The contra allocation account, meaning the second leg for your depreciation will be accumulated depreciation. It's forever and always an asset account. Okay, meaning that you are going to have that one as your underneath line item under the depreciation. Okay, so basically you're going to have what's called the depreciation. Think of it in this way. Depreciation in the previous years, the form will build up to your accumulated depreciation in the current year. Sometimes they can confuse you. They would say you're dealing with the 2021 current financial year. Okay, they don't give you the accumulated depreciation for that or in that trial balance, but they give you the depreciation for let's say 2019 and 2020. What they want from you is add up them together to form your accumulated depreciation. That's your contract allocation card. Easy as that. Right, era of omission or era of an omission transaction that I omitted either debit or credit entries have been recorded have been recorded for example it, it happens even in live world corporate okay sometimes the bookkeeper is still in training or they make I mean we're human beings at the end of the day you make an error you need to correct that okay it's easier right because the system just does that for you and then you balance it but in accounting you will see most when we do the bank reconciliation statement okay well you got a list of Sorry, the data in the creator's uh, reconciliation statement. Sometimes you put an item on the debit side while it belongs to the credit side. However, they give you that as a question, but you have to adjust it. They give you the wrong or the incorrect uh, T account of the debtor's control account, the creditors control account, and then you have to adjust it to make it correct. There's a lot of questions based on that one. We are going to deal with it. So that's posting it to the wrong account. Compensating the, 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 the errors. Most companies, they see that, remember in accounting, they do what's called the recon on a timely basis. So when they recon and things are not balancing all together, you need to see where the error is. Let's look at the principles with regards to the error. Principles of recording an error becomes faulty. For example, an expense account can be 
credit opening up, we know expense increases on the debit side, okay? And there's no way an opening balance for an, ex uh, for an expense would come to the credit side. Meaning that that kind of an adjustment should be done, okay? So the factors balancing your travel balance could lead to the following. At the end of the day, when you're transferring your balances to the trial balance, it won't balance simply because there was an error that was made. Okay, there's quite not a lot. Trading errors in the trial balance is actually the same thing. We see, okay, there, this is where you are going to be appointed as an accountant. They would say, we appoint you, we give you this position so that you can be responsible to prepare the financial statement for the theft. That's a heavy position for everybody. And you need to make sure that the financial statements that you're preparing should be fair and should be fine, should be in compliance and everything, so that when you prepare or present that to your seniors, everything should be all in order. Okay. The other thing that forms part of your statement of funding, sorry. The other thing that forms part of your components of the financial statement is the statement of cash flow, but unfortunately we don't deal with that. So cash flow is not part of our content. It leaves us less work for you. Notes, I've explained that. It's con it consists of your property plan and equipment. That's actually left to you note. This class ended quite earlier than expected, but I think at this time, towards my text because it took a bit of a longer time than expected. All right, that's the end of my session for you. And I want to thank you so much for attending today. And then I'm open up for any questions before I say goodbye. Is there any questions? Can you see, we've dealt with theory, but we're going to apply it at a later stage, particularly from topic C. I wanted, uh, or rather, please, could you repeat, you know what you said about assets and expenses increasing where? Um, that's what I, I missed. Okay, no, that's fine. Let me just, uh, despite what Patrick, but I'm still going to send you an email with regards to what Patrick, I think it's much more easier than this. Okay, but what I said was, you can do, okay, you can you can just write two cycles, right? two big cycles. The first cycle, you're going to write assets plus expenses. Mm -hmm. And then you can say they increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. OK. And then the second cycle, you're going to write your equity, income, mm -hmm. and life. Mm -hmm. and yeah. You see, the increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. Increase on the uh, credit. CR side. Yeah. Yes. Decrease on the DR. OK, OK, cool. Yes, All right. Thank you. My email is paladineso at gmail.com. 